Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's Jake with Quality Truck and Equipment. Today I wanna to go over a very hot topic that we get a lot of questions about. Today we're gonna to be covering hoist maintenance. So you know that we're everything hook lift here at Quality Truck and Equipment, that's all we do. We see that there's a lot of need for information on hoist maintenance. We have a lot of questions of people calling in, you know, how do I take care of this piece of equipment that I just bought? So in today's video, I really wanna highlight, you know, the key components to making sure that the longevity of your hoist is gonna last for many years to come. So we're gonna point out some key points on the Stellar Slider 26 and we're gonna point out some key components on the swap loader SL214 hoist and really dive deep into maintaining these hoists. So let's jump into it. So guys, on this side, we have the 2025 Mac MD7. It's a 33K truck D-rated down to 26,000 with the swap loader SL214 hoist. This is a 20,000 pound lifting capacity hoist. This hoist is gonna do 14 to 16 foot container links optimally, and you can run down to 12 foot links as well. This hoist is a 3654 manual adjustment hook. We'll go into that a little bit later. The one thing I really wanted to point out that makes a big difference on this hoist is Swap Loader's patented U-Lock or Universal Body Lock. It's a great feature. We're gonna dive into that a little bit more in the video. Uh, stay tuned. All right, guys, so there's gonna be five main points that we wanna to touch on when you're going to do your maintenance on your Swap Loader 214 hoist. The number one is going to be your hydraulic tank and filter. The number two is going to be your control service. The number three is going to be greasing your hoist. Number four is going to be your jib lockout valve. And number five is going to be checking your nuts and your fittings. The number one thing that we're gonna talk about is the hydraulic tank and hydraulic filters. As you can see here, this has a visual sight gauge for the hydraulic fluid on the side of the tank here. Um, as you operate the hoist, you're gonna see that this is gonna go up and down. Uh, if you're running the hoist, if you're going into the pickup position, that is gonna decrease. And as you load the container back into the transport position, that'll put fluid back into the tank. If you ever see that this is low, guys, you're just gonna wanna top that off with some hydraulic fluid. The industry standard for hydraulic fluid that Swap Loader recommends is an ISO 32 and an ISO 46. If you're in the climates like we are here in Michigan, you're gonna to wanna to run a lower viscosity hydraulic fluid, which is ISO 32. And if you're somewhere, you know, we sell trucks to guys in Hawaii, you might want to run that higher viscosity ISO 46 in the hydraulic tank to you know maintain and get the most life out of your hoist. There's a lot of discrepancies online. We see all the forums and everything, and you know everyone says use this or use that. This is right from the word of mouth of Swap Loader. We're a registered Swap Loader distributor, so you guys can put 100% trust in what you're getting in this information and use this to your advantage. Um, that's coming right from Swap Loader. All right, guys. So this is the heart and soul of the hook lift. This is the valve body for the Swap Loader hoist. We can open this up here and really see the brains, what makes this thing tick. So in here, you can see that you have another visual sight gauge. This is for the PSI. This hoist is a low pressure system and it operates at about 3250 PSI. Some of the benefits of the low pressure system uh, is gonna be less maintenance, it's gonna be less wear and tear on your seals, it's gonna be less wear and tear on the hoist itself, so it's gonna be cost savings for you. Some of the troubleshooting things that when you get in here, this is an electronic controlled hoist. So you do have the solenoids inside of the valve body. So if you have any issues at all, you know, with your electronic controls, this is probably gonna be the number one place to check. Could have a bad solenoid. And if any point, if you, you know, controls stop working mid lift or anything like that, there are, you know, troubleshooting reliefs here. So if you take a needle nose, pair of pliers or something with a pointy end and hit these relief pressures, you have one for your lift, you have one for your jib, you have one for your universal body lock. So if you press these in, and your hoist is mid lift, it should release the pressures on the hydraulic system and bring that hoist back down so you can safely transport your load back to wherever you need to be. If this does go bad, you're gonna to wanna to take this to one of your registered swap loader distributors and they're gonna be able to get you the replacement part that you need to get you up and running again. So if that doesn't fix your problem with the controls, it might be in the controller itself. So we'll go inside the cab here and show you some diagnostics on that. So if you're not getting any functionality out of the control box itself, it's likely due to you know, a loose connection somewhere on the controller itself or there could be a loose connection inside the controller box, which that can all be diagnosed at a swap loader distributor as well. So if you have any problems with your hoist functions, these are gonna be the root causes of them. This is the place that you would wanna start. All right, we're gonna jump into topic number three and that is greasing the hoist. This is one of the most crucial steps of the maintenance process. The more that you grease this piece of machinery, the longer it's gonna last, the more longevity you're gonna get, and the more return on your investment that you will receive. So we're gonna go over the grease certs where you can find all those on this hoist. We're gonna start with the weekly grease certs that you're gonna to wanna to apply grease weekly. Swap Loader recommends that you apply a little bit of grease right in the hook so you're eliminating some of the friction from when you connect to the container. They also recommend if you're doing a lot of swaps of the 36 to 54 inch hook to throw some grease in there weekly. Uh, for you guys that are running multiple hook height cans. This jib right here does not get grease, but it does need lubricant. They recommend a graphite spray on the jib itself so it's non-stick, so you're not getting dirt, dust, or anything that's gonna wear those wear pads inside of the jib down. So no grease, 
graphite spray and you'll be good to go. Now we'll jump into what Swap Loader recommends to grease monthly. And there's gonna be two grease certs here on the back of the main cylinders on each side. And we'll walk our way down. On the back end of that main cylinder is gonna be another grease cert. This is gonna be another monthly maintenance. Coming around to the back, you're gonna have your roller wheels. These are gonna be needed to grease monthly as well. And on the inside of here of the dual pivot, two more grease certs. Those are also monthly maintenance on the Swap Loader 214 hoist. If you keep this thing grease, it's gonna last two times the truck will, and you're gonna be hauling trash for years to come. All right, so topic number four that we wanna to touch on as far as hoist maintenance is going to be the jib lockout valve. This hoist is designed to not allow the jib to go in and out in the dump position. That can cause unwanted wear and tear on the hoist, so you do not want that. If your jib ever stops working, probably the root cause of that is going to be located in the rear of the hoist with the jib lockout valve. We'll walk back here, we'll show you this. There's a small plunger here um, that controls the jib slide. If you can see that there, um, sometimes dirt debris can get in there um, and cause it to stick. So you wanna make sure this is always cleaned out and clear of uh, any dust, debris, or anything like that. A corrosion spray can help keep dirt and debris out of that so that you do not run into the issue of not being able to slide your jib forward and backwards. So make sure you guys are checking that regularly and you'll be good to go. All right, so topic number five is going to be your fittings and your bolts that hold everything together. Our guys do a really good job of making sure everything's tightened down to spec and they run the hoses very nicely. As you can see, along the side of the hoist, everything's zip tied away so there's no catch points. Everything's really nice and clean on the hoist itself. But you guys are putting these through very strenuous, you know, situations. You guys are hauling trash. You guys are hauling lots of weight. You know, stuff is going to get wore down. So you're going to daily want to make sure nothing looks loose or nothing is leaking. You're going to want to address those situations right away so you can prevent, you know, some major issues or unneeded wear or tear on the hoist. So that is very, very crucial. So make sure you guys are doing the, your daily inspections on the hoist as well to make sure nothing is going wrong with it. One thing that I would recommend, I mean, if you, even yourself, or if you have drivers, creating a daily checklist, you know, monthly checklist to make sure all these things are being inspected on the hoist so you don't run into unforeseen, you know, issues with the hoist, premature wear and tear, all those things that you could easily avoid by just doing regular maintenance. One added piece of maintenance advice for you guys there, you know, Swapler does come with the wearable pads, these high strength plastic pads. Over the use of putting dumpsters on and off, these are gonna wear down, these are called wear pads. One pro tip is that when these do get worn down, you can undo these Allen bolts and flip them and get a little bit more life out of it. The more containers you're running, obviously these are gonna get worn down faster. And if you're on metal on metal, it's something you're definitely gonna wanna get addressed and get these swapped out. So one more piece of advice on Swap Loader's new universal lock. If you're not getting the full amount of pressure that you think or if it's not engaging into your containers, likely there's a leak along the line or if you're not building enough pressure, you're going to want to backtrack this back to the valve body to make sure nothing has come up or if you sprung a leak or anything like that. So just make sure you're checking that out and you'll be good to go. So here we're flipping the hook to show the adjustment between 36 and 54. So you're gonna let that fall out of place there. Take the zinc pin. Repin it, and then you're all switched to 54. Simple as that. Make sure you put the safety pin on the opposite side. And you're golden. Yeah, so I just want to take a quick second to show how easy the manual adjustable hook is on the swap loader unit. As you see, it only took me about 10 seconds to go from 36 to 54 inch hook height. Very simple to do. Anyone can do it. Yeah, so hopefully that quick demonstration will help aid your decision which, with whatever way you choose to go. All right, guys, so we're going to jump over and switch gears into the Stellar product. So here we have the Stellar Slider 26. We're going to cover some of the same exact points that we covered on the swap loader model. Step one, we're going to go over the hydraulic fluids, the hydraulic filter. Step two, we're going to go over servicing the controls on this unit. Step three, we are going to check all the grease certs and grease fittings on this hoist. Step four, we are going to look at the jib lockout on this hoist. And step five, we'll finally you know, go over all the nuts and bolts and fittings of this truck as well. All right, jumping into topic number one on the seller side of things is going to be the hydraulic fluid and filters. As you can see, the hydraulics on this, this is a high pressure system. The Stellar is going to operate at about 4,200 PSI. It's gonna have the same sight gauges that you saw on the last one. You're gonna come over here and you're gonna see the temperature gauge on the Stellar side. And you may notice that that is dyed blue. That is so that from the factory, they can see if any impurities or anything had went through the hoist. So 
once you start adding and switching hydraulic fluid that will change more into the clear. On Stellar, they recommend that the first service be done at 250 operating hours. That is just the hoist side, not the operating hours of the truck. So how many full unloads and offloads on the hoist itself, that's when you're gonna do the service. And then subsequently, you're gonna do it every thousand hours. And then after that, you're gonna be able to run that for up to 6,500 hours. So you're gonna get a, a lot of life out of the hydraulic fluid. So as we keep going on the hydraulic tank, uh, you can notice here on the back side, this also has a pressure sight gauge. Like I said, this unit operates at about 4,200 PSI. So if you're not getting the full PSI, you could have a clog or you may need to change your hydraulic filter or you may have some blockages somewhere along the way. So that's something that you're going to want to address. So topic number two is going to be control service. On this unit, this is set up with cable controls compared to the electric controls that were on the other toys. As you can see, there's cables running from the back of the valve body into the cab of the truck. You're gonna wanna make sure these don't come loose. Over time, these can get stretched and it can leave you with some play in the control levers. So if you have play and your hoist isn't operating as fast as you think it should be, you're gonna wanna come here first to diagnose the problem and that should get you to where you need to be. So topic number three is going to be greasing the hoist. We explained why this is so beneficial. I mean, for the life of the hoist, you're gonna wanna make sure you're keeping up on your weekly and your monthly greasings of the hoist. Um, on this Stellar unit, there are 16 greasers in total, a lot more compared to the 214. So with both of these hoists, you're gonna be wanting to use a multi-purpose quality grease. There's a couple different variances of types of grease that you could use in both of these hoists. And depending on your conditions, if you're in a high heat, you know, high debris, high dust, you'll wanna choose the best grease for you. But the main thing is to just keep the hoist grease. So on this Stellar 26, you're gonna have a total of 16 grease zerds. And we'll go over those now. You'll have two here in the back of the main cylinders. You're gonna have one that's related to the hydraulic adjustable jib. You're going to have two on each side of the roller wheel here. You'll have two more on the back side of the cylinder. Two more on the inside rollers. Coming to the rear of the truck, you're gonna have a total of six. You're gonna have two grease certs on the outside main rollers, two grease certs on the back of the dual pickup, and two grease certs on this rear cylinder as well. Making sure to keep all this maintained is going to make the truck last you know, ever so much longer. Stellar and Swap Loader both make great products, but you're gonna have to keep up with this routine maintenance to make sure that you're gonna get the full life expectancy out of both hoists. So make sure you guys are greasing. So the same thing on the Slider 26, you're gonna be locked out on the jib cylinder. So when you're in the dump position, you're not gonna have control to go in and out with your jib. On the Stellar unit, you're gonna see the jib lockout valve here on the back. So if you're getting that movement of the jib while you have a load on, you're gonna wanna check this out. To keep this hoist going as long as it should, you're gonna wanna check on things like this regularly to make sure that you're operational. So step five for the maintenance on these hoists is going to be you know, your nuts and your fittings. Like I said, over time, you know, wear and tear, stuff can come loose. You're gonna wanna make sure you're doing daily pre-trips on the truck to make sure you don't have any loose fittings when it comes to the valve body or anywhere. If you're losing pressures, you're gonna wanna make sure that all of your fittings are nice and tight. Or if you see leaks or any loose bolts, you're gonna wanna address those very quickly to avoid premature wear and tear on the hoist and to keep this thing running for the full life expectancy and to keep you making money. So like we talked about at the beginning of the video, this hoist does have a couple extra grease certs and that's because this hoist features extra rollers in place of the wear pads. So you're gonna wanna make sure these are greased, greased frequently to keep these you know, bearings nice and greased up so you're not gonna have these getting caught and then causing unwanted friction on the long sills of your dumpsters. So one of the biggest takeaways from the Stellar unit is going to be the hydraulic adjustable jib. It's a really, really great feature that Stellar offers. You don't have to get out of the cab. You don't have to do any manual adjustments. You can do all that from the lever inside the cab. You can go from 36 to 54 inch hook height. So if you're one of those guys that's constantly adjusting from 36 to 54, you don't want you to get out or your driver to get out to make those manual adjustments. This is gonna be the hoist and the setup for you. All right, guys, I hope you guys found this video helpful when it comes to maintaining your swap loader and your stellar hoist. Hope you learned a thing or two. If you have any interest in these trucks at all, both of them are available. Be sure to reach out to us at 989-802-0907 with any questions in regards to the trucks or any questions in regards to maintenance parts or anything that comes with the Stellar or the Swap Loader Hoist. If you're not already following us, give us a like and a follow. We appreciate all the feedback and look forward to making more videos like this for you guys.